uh, all the participants, uh, the faculty members of all uh, various institute institution. So I welcome all the participants today for this uh, day two of uh, online ST sponsored faculty development program on strength of materials one C E three zero one. And I welcome our speaker today, uh, Dr. R. Ponudarek, sir, Associate Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Jagaraja College of Engineering, Madurai. And uh, Dr. Ponudarek, sir, has completed his uh, PhD uh, in Atana University, Chennai, in the year 2014. And he's completed his postgraduate uh, in Structural Engineering, Fracture Mechanics at UMS University, Baroda, in the year 1987. Sorry, 1997. He has published papers in many uh, reputed journals, uh, in which his recently published journal is on paper is on determination of stress concentration on built-on wheel turbine buckets using photoelasticity. And he has presented papers in many conferences, both national and international level. And uh, he has delivered lectures in many uh, reputed uh, institution, institution, which includes BIT, uh, Banari Amman Institute, etc. And he has delivered lectures in uh, various titles like uh, Evaluation of liquefaction potential, seismic instrumentation, seismic analysis and design of masonry and RC structures, fraction mechanics, mechanics of materials, etc. So he, he also an active member of uh, Indian Society of Earthquake Technology and All India Bricks and Tile Manufacturing Federation, New Delhi. So I request our speaker, Dr. R. Pundari, sir, to take over the session. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Vignesh. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, one and all. Uh, first of all, uh, I am uh, give thank you, Dr. R. Kumuda, Madam, uh, Professor and Head of Civil Engineering Department, for giving me the opportunity. Okay. So, at least one topic in mechanics of material uh, that is uh, two dimensional stress and strain. Okay. So, I will share this with Sundar. I will share the PPT. Please available. Okay. So this is what the content of my presentation today. Okay. So we are going to deal with. Uh, sir, your screen is not visible, sir. Not visible. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's visible now, sir. It's visible? Okay. okay. Yes, sir. So, this is what the content of uh, uh, today's uh, presentation. Okay. So, we are going to deal with the state of stress in three dimensions. Okay. So, from three dimensions, now we are going to come to two dimensions. We see that. And uh, what are the stresses will be acting on the inclined plane for a 2D element? Okay. 2D element. Part. Then we will be talking about the principal stress to the plane. And the maximum stress, how to calculate the maximum stress, how to direct this maximum stress, and uh, how to solve the problems of uh, principal stresses in two dimensions only. Okay, uh, same way, Morse, by using Morse law, it is possible to find the state of stress at a given point. It is possible. Okay. Then uh, we will touch upon something related to uh, plane strain also. Okay, so far we are talking about only plane stress. Uh, what uh, what we are going to do in case of plane strain also, we see. Okay. So this is what the general uh, uh, outline of this uh, presentation today. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, so far you might have studied about a little bit regarding the stresses and the strain. The elaborated in the, in the last previous day yesterday. Okay. Um, suppose if we take uh, any uh, bar, any bar. Okay, if you apply a tension load, you know that what at any given point in that particular bar will be at any particular point in this bar will be how much? If it is P is a load, area a cross section of unit uh, this bar is A, then we know that this sigma at any given point will be P by area. Yes or no? Yes. Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Suppose now in, in this also, in this case, if you have if you are able to refer that uh, this loading is applied uh, okay, uh, along the axis actually. Suppose this is the diameter, in this axis of the member. In case if you are applying a loading along this axis, okay, so that is what you say it is uniaxial. 
uniaxial that is why the axis and the loadings are parallel okay uniaxial so in this case we are gripping the specimen okay we are gripping the specimen then we apply a tension load yes or no so we, we are not applying the load along the axis actually so what we are doing is we are just gripping the specimen at both ends of the spe specimen then we apply a tension load so in such cases what happens is okay the stain at the boundary at the periphery of the specimen will be more and the stain at the center of the specimen will be less do you agree or not yes sir no yes sir yes sir okay so the stain at the periphery is more at the center the stain will be less because stain is more at the periphery stain multiplied by n small will be stresses the stresses developed will be more at the periphery of the specimen compared to the center of the specimen but here what we are talking is only average stress sigma so sigma 2 p by a is only the average here so it is not indicating the maximum stress developed at the periphery and the minimum stress developed at the center we are talking about only average stress so we know the formula of our uh, calculation of the uh, sigma that is average stress you could be by area area of cross section okay suppose the same specimen if you have been uh, given like this same specimen is given but the loading is not parallel to axis the load is perpendicular to axis suppose let us assume that so in such cases what is the stress of this particular point anybody so loading is now perpendicular it is not uh, along the axis now so uh, if you are asked if uh, what is the stress at this any given point in this case yes anybody is it again p by a Okay, so now earlier I was applying a loading along the axis now. Now this is axis here. The loading is perpendicular to axis. In such cases, at any given point in the specimen, what will be the state of stress? Is it a P by A or any other formula? Any other formula? Yes? Anybody? Don't you see you can speak up, okay, no problem. So what will be the set of stress at this given point in case if the loading is perpendicular to axis of the specimen? Yes. So it will be bending actually. So when the axis is uh, perpendicular to loading, it will be bending naturally. So that means bending stress you have to calculate. That is what we say it is M by Z. So what is the bending moment at this particular point? What is the section modulus at this particular point, cross section of the specimen? So we can get the bending stress now. Okay. So in case if the loading and the axis is perpendicular, so that time whenever it is bending, it, the bending stress is involved in this case. So here, if you are asking to calculate the stress at any given point, so you have to use the sigma b bending stress. Okay. Uh, same way, the same material. See same specimen, same specimen. I'm gripping at one end of the specimen. Okay, I'm just I'm, uh, I'm applying a twisting moment. Okay, so what type of stresses will be developed at this every part of the specimen? How do we calculate the stresses developed in this particular section, cross section? So I'm just fixing at one end of the specimen. I'm just twisting the specimen. That means I'm applying a torsional moment. What type of stresses will be developed? Will it be a tensile, compressive, or shear? Yes. Actually, when I'm giving a rotation, that means torsional moment is applied over the specimen. What happened? The failure plane will be at a 45 degree angle always. If you just take a chart piece and apply a grip uh, one end of the chart piece at one end, other end is just to give a twisting moment, you will find that uh, there will be a 45 degree angle crack, okay, 40 degree angle plane failure. Yes or no? 
பார்த்துருக்கீங்களா அப்படி டு அக்ரி வித் மீ ஸோ இட் பி ஃபார்ட்டி ஃபைவ் டிகிரி ஆங்கிள் ஆஃப் பிளைன் ஆஃப் ஃபெயிலியர் ஓகே ஸோ ஒய் எட் இஸ் ஒய் எட் இஸ் ஃபார்ட்டி ஃபைவ் டிகிரி அட் ஆங்கிள் என்னபடி ஒய் இந்த பிளைன் ஆஃப் ஃபெயிலியர் இஸ் அட் ஃபார்ட்டி ஃபைவ் டிகிரி ஆங்கிள் திஸ் கேஸ் ஓகே So we know that uh, the maximum CSS is expected to develop at 45 degree to the maximum principal plane. Okay, you might have studied it somewhere. Okay, 45 degree angle. So the same way in case if we go for tension specimen, if we go for tension specimen, again, so there will be a neck for formation. When you are applying tension load, so there will be neck formation yes anybody yes or no the area cross is going to decrease at a, at a given point at any point in this specimen there will be a formation of neck so actually what it i indicate this is it is actually the axis of this member specimen so with respect to axis at a 45 degree angle of plane you are tend to have failure at a 45 degree angle so that indicates that this specimen fails in the plane of shear that is what we say ductile material ductile material always fails in the plane of shear so that means in case if you want to investigate the failure of a ductile material uh, just to look for the plane of maximum shear stress that's all so the principal stress are material in case of a uh, ductile material so we want to have only direction of the maximum shear stress so that means you just prevent it in that particular plane if you know that in the plane only it is going to have the crack propagation and then you can take a preventive measures to only at the point of the angle so that is what the idea is all about okay yes am i audible yes sir yes sir audible sir okay okay so Uh, any can anybody can elaborate why the neck formation takes place at the uh, given specimen why it all this uh, area cross section has to reduce but in case of brittle material like a chalk piece if you take if, uh, when you have uh, just to break this specimen so it won't be the neck formation only ductile material happens why it is happening in ductile material okay can anyone guess why there is a neck formation always happens only in ductile material not in ductile material uh, sir because in ductile material uh, stress will go beyond yielding limit like uh, yield stress okay okay very good very good uh, you have yeah yeah then we have a nicking zone uh, in the stressing graph okay okay let the stress goes beyond the elastic limit or yield point where the neck has to takes place neck formation is there no but suppose uh, let us say assume a clay specimen clay kai kai men eduthu okay so make the clay in the cylindrical space shape we just pull the clay okay this is a clay specimen what do you observe here again there will be neck formation area cross section will be reducing at some Uh, will it be at the center or any, anywhere? Failure plane. Uh, just to, uh, uh, it may not be at the center. Uh, exactly, it may not be at the center. Wherever it be point is there, there we will have the area of reduction of area cross section. But okay, why it, our question is why the area of cross section starts reducing inductive material. So in case if you find the clay, you may find a sand particle present in it i so suppose you will agree with me sand particle that the particle sand particle 
are brittle kind of things. Okay, sand particles are brittle. Whereas surrounded by the sand particles is a clay matrix, ductile matrix. Okay. So when I am applying a load, what happens is the clay surrounded by the sand particle goes along with the load. But the sand particle doesn't cooperate with the clay. Sand particle remains there only. So there is a creation of void around the sand particle. There is a misunderstanding between the sand particle and the clay. So there is a creation of void around the sand particle. Yes or no? Yes, do you agree or not? So when I am applying a loading, okay, so sand, part, sand particle remains there only, sand particle, sand particle. But the ductile matrix, that is a clay, surrounded by the sand particle, is going to yield. So it goes along with the load. But the sand particle remains there. So sand particle doesn't participate in the pro uh, process. Okay, clay undergoes the loading. Uh, clay undergoes deformation, whereas the sand particle remains there already. There is a misunderstanding between the sand particle and the clay. So that leads to the creation of the air void surrounding the sand particle. Do you agree or not? So this air void is getting bigger and bigger because it is getting quieter. Okay. So the net area of cross section here, when we look at the area of cross section here, that is pi d squared by 4. But this here, in this plane, if you look at the area of cross section here, so it will be d minus this air void. So area of cross section reduces. Yes or no? Here minus air voids. Net area of cross section is reduces. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that means we know that the sigma is equal to P by E. Already we saw that once the area of cross section reduces, the stress is supposed to increase. This stress again handled by only the clay, not the sand particle. So sand particle is not taking any load in this process. Only the clay takes all the loads. So that is why the creation of void around the sand particle. There is a misunderstanding between sand particle and the clay. So that leads so wherever sand particle you have, you have the air void. So the net area of restriction, wherever it is uh, very less. So there only the neck formation takes place because this area of restriction is reduces, stress increases. Again, increase in stress and uh, taken by the only clay matrix. So again, the neck formation it gets uh, towards goes towards a point ultimately phase so that is why we witness cup and cone fracture in case of mild seal so that means it is always happens at a 40 degree angle this angular plane of period will be at a 40 degree angle in case of ductile material the neck formation takes place because of material we have sand brittle particle sand particle clay matrix ductile matrix so you will find on all ductile material, let, let it be mild seal or aluminium or any, any other material, you will have the brittle particle present in the material, that in the form of carbon. So this brittle particle doesn't cooperate with the loading. So only the ductile matrix surrounded by the carbon particle is going to deform. So that is a problem. In case if the ductile matrix material has all particles have the same elastic property, then we cannot uh, have the cup and cone fracture. The problem is that we have brittle particle in case in the ductile matrix. So that is the problem. So the brittle particle is not going to take a load. Okay, whereas the ductile material surrounded by the brittle particle is takes all the loads. So that is why area of voids are created. The voids because of the wire voids, net area of cross reduces as the cross section reduces, stress increases. So again, increased stress is uh, taken by the only the ductile matrix. So that is the reason for the cup and cone fracture in the ductile matrix. Okay. 
is it understood now shall we go further yes sir yes sir so in, in this case if you look at the simple tension specimen the stress is related to strain by only young smallness okay only young smallness only one parameter is sufficient so here what we assumed is all the particle in the specimen is having same elastic property each and every particle will have the same young smallness same partial ratio same modulus of rigidity so in such cases the stress is related to strain only by young smallness in case if we take a crude element like a paper same if we apply a loading here tension loading that is delta of stress at any given point will not be sigma is equal to young smallness into strain so in this case we might have studied also along x direction epsilon x will be equal to sigma x by e minus mu times sigma y by e so that means here in case of 2d the young smallness and the partial ratio two parameters are required to relate the stresses and strain whereas in this case it was only one parameter young smallness where if in case of 2d we require to have at least two parameter young smallness and partial ratio then only state of stress can be defined in case of 2d same in case if we go for 3d so three parameters are required i want to say the young smallness partial ratio modulus of rigidity to relate the stresses with the strain is it clear now okay so having this uh, in all uh, background uh, so we will one by one we will go for uh, finding the state of stress in first three dimension then we will uh, go from three dimension to two dimension we will see that so this is what uh, a state of stress in three dimension suppose this is a body there is a body so we have this body is subject to say some kind of loading here okay so in case of any action we can say stress is load by area uh, in case if it is bending it is m by z okay so in case of any action but in this case at any given point if you are asking you what is the stress at this given point how will you define this how to find the stress okay for the given loading suppose for the given loading let us assume that this is a point here okay i can draw number of trains passing through the particular point number of trains passing through the particular point yes or no do you agree or not okay so in the body at a given point if you draw trains passing through the particular point it will be a infinite number of trains may be passing so out of all the trains one train will be having the maximum stress do you agree or not or how the train will have the equal stresses yes out of all the train only one train will have the maximum stress do you agree or not yes yes sir agrees okay so this is about let us assume that this is the plane this plane have the maximum stresses okay so this plane we are called as a principal plane maximum principal plane the stresses in the plane is called as a principal stresses maximum principal stresses okay suppose let us assume that with respect to original this plane is having the maximum stresses so this plane becomes a principal plane so the stresses in the plane is called as a principal maximum principal stresses so 90 degree to the plane okay so that plane will have the minimum stresses this plane will have the maximum stresses whereas in between if you look at all the other, any other planes it will have intermediate between the sigma max and the sigma minima okay uh, at 40 degree to the maximum principal plane we have the Max is yes, that's tau max. Okay, here is the tau max. Tau is zero here. Here again, tau is zero here. Whereas the tau max will be maximum at 40 degree to the principal plane. 
So now you understand what is the principal stress, principal plane. So in case if you are giving a body which is subject to a different kind of loading, at any given point, if you are drawing with number of planes passing through the particular point, so out of all the plane, one plane will have the maximum stresses. That the plane I call it as a principal plane. And also the minimum stresses will be available at 90 degree to the maximum principal plane. Okay. So in between, all other plane will be having any stresses, but it won't be equal to maximum and the minimum. It will be in between. Okay. And the uh, party particular to the maximum principal plane will have the maximum CSS. So in the principal plane, we have the CSS will be zero. So the rest of the plane will have some amount of CSS also. But here when it comes, it will be zero again. Okay. So in case of uh, 3D, okay, so stress at the given point. This point, if I am designating uh, like a cubical form. So in case if I am designating a cubic form, so how it is going to look like this way. So that is what the normal is, shear component of the stress in case of 3D. So let us assume that this axis, x axis, this y axis, this is z axis. Okay. So each plane will have one normal stress and two shear stresses. You, you know that. Okay. One normal stress and two shear stresses. So here the normal stress is designated by the letter sigma xx. Okay, and uh, so two shear stresses. Actually, what is the indicate actually? How will you designate this? What is x here? This x indicate what is this x indicate actually? The first subscript indicates the axis that is perpendicular to the face. Okay, there is a plane in the axis that is x axis. That plane is in the x axis, the position of the plane in the axis. So that is what the x here. So this x will designate the direction. This x will designate direction. So that is why we say it is a sigma xx. So this plane also has a shear stresses. That is a tau xy plane, tau xz plane. Okay, tau xy. So the first x indicates where is that plane? The plane is in x axis. The second a y second subscript indicates the direction. Here it's y direction. That is your tau xy. Same way here, tau x is that the first subscript indicate the plane where where the plane is. It is in x axis. And z indicates the direction of the shear stress. Is it okay now? So how the subscription first subscript indicates you only the, uh, the axis at which the plane exists. Plane exists. The second subscript indicates the direction of the force. Yes. So here in each plane we have the normal stress and the two shear stresses. Okay, normal stress is perpendicular to the cross section. Okay, whereas shear stress is parallel to cross section. Tau x y tau x z. So likewise we have a, all other parameters like sigma y, tau y z, tau y x. Okay, in this plane. So in this plane we have tau z y tau z x and a sigma z okay so we witness this tau x y is equal to tau y x same way all rest of the things so that means i have only a six component one two three and this three plus three so six independent component of the stress at a given point. That is a sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, tau xy, tau z, and tau xz. Okay? Do you understand now? This is a set of stress at any given point. In case of 3D, so if you have three axes, definitely the principal stresses also will be three. We have 
maximum precipices and the minimum precipices and one more six. So because three, we are dealing with three D. Okay, in certain uh, situations, what happen is the Z comma all become zero. The Z very wherever Z comma is there, it becomes zero now. So in such cases, this 3D element of a stress at a point is converted to 2D element. So that is what our topic actually. So analysis of two dimensional stress and strain. Doctor Punutari, sir. Doctor Punutari, sir. Is he not connected, sir? No, just now uh, something happened. He left it. Left the meeting. Left the meeting. Ah, uh, just now he left the meeting. Man. So I think he has got some power issues and uh, he's trying to connect back sir. Is the screen is visible now? Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Audible. Yes, sir. Audible. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, have a <laughs> okay. Now, so we understood how the 3D has been transferred to 2D. So we I stress that any given point is designated by only the six independent coordinates. Okay. So this independent coordinate component of the stress that is sigma x, sigma y, sigma z. Tau x y, tau y z, and tau x z. Okay, they are existing at the point, but what we what is eliminated is wherever the z commands are there, so that are eliminated. So it becomes a two D now. So that is why we are doing only two dimensional set of stress.
we can nowadays become a two dinam so now we are interested in finding this an normal and shear component of the state of stress for two d cases so this is what we are going to do it today so in case of 3d if you look at it okay i will go a little bit faster uh, in case of 3d i have the car six component sigma x sigma y sigma z and tau x y tau y z tau x z okay so let us assume that uh, we have been given this data sigma x is 80 mpa sigma y 50 mpa sigma z 20 mpa so tau y z also 40 so all the cases are 40 now how to calculate the principal stresses for this case so for that uh, so we require to have the equation that is we call as a characteristic equation So sigma cube minus a sigma square plus b sigma minus c is equal to zero. So in case if you are able to get the constant value, constant a b c value, then it is possible to solve sigma one, sigma two, sigma three. We can get. So we really need to get only a b c value. Okay, how to get the a b c value now? We will see that. Okay, so this is what the the problem statement. So we are going to get the sigma one, sigma two. Sigma three from this. So we've been given sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, and the three component of these shear stresses. So we are interested to get the sigma one, sigma two, sigma three. That is principal stress direction, principal stress value, and its direction also, and the maximum tau max, maximum strain shear, strain shear also. So this is what the Galton equation. So to get the value of y, we can see. All the normal stresses, sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z. Okay. So, dependent on you can not only this data, uh, so that it will be useful for you. Okay, please do, uh, note out the dots. Sigma x, sigma y, sigma z are given, and tau x is also given. Tau uh, CSS components. We are asked to find the maximum principal value, minimum principal value, and uh, uh, three principal stresses value. Okay, and maximum CSS also. So note down. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is what the equation is uh, all about. That is Galton's equation. So here uh, we need to get the value of A, B, C to solve this problem. Let us say uh, uh, have this equation: this sigma cube minus A sigma squared plus B sigma minus C is equal to zero. So let us assume that uh, A is equal to Sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z. So we can get the value of a, a. if we know a, sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z. So 80 plus 50 plus 30. Okay. So a value is 150. So we know the value of a here. Then value of a is equal to 150. So in case if we are able to get the value of b. And C, then it is easy to solve the problem. We can get the value of sigma one, sigma two, sigma three. Okay. Then we go for calculation of the B. 
how to find the constant b shall i go ahead yes sir so the b constant can be obtained by using this expression sigma x into sigma y plus sigma y into sigma z plus sigma x into sigma z minus tau x with the whole square minus tau y is at the whole square minus tau x is at the whole square so we know the value of sigma x sigma y and the tau x y all the css component so we can target the value of b by using this expression so let us assume that we have arrived the value of b let's say that that is 1800 okay just to note the value of b 1800 Okay, note it down. Let's write the expression and the answer. We can substitute afterwards. So A value is known to you, already you calculated, and a B value is also calculated. So now you go for a calculation of the C value. Shall we go for the calculation of the C? Yes, sir. So the C value is given by this expression. Sigma X, Sigma Y, Sigma Z. Plus two times the tau XY, tau y is at tau x is at minus sigma x tau y, y is at all square here all systems are same value there won't be any problem minus sigma y tau x is at uh, all square minus sigma z tau x y all square so if you substitute all these values we can get the value of c so the c value obtained is uh, minus 32000 here So having calculated the value of A, B, and C, we can get this complete expression. Now we can use a calculator uh, to calculate the three unknown value, that is sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. We can substitute the value of A, B, C in this expression. Okay, Try to use the calculator to get the sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. Can anyone say what about the answer? Maximum, minimum, what are the value you got? After substitution of ABC in this equation. So we know the value of A, B and C. Substitute the value of ABC in this characteristic equation. What is the value of sigma 1? Maximum value. Yes. You can have a notebook along with the calculator, so it will be useful for you. So what was the value? In case if you substitute the value of ABC in this equation, a 150, B 1800, C minus 32,000.
can anyone say about the answer? Sigma 1, Sigma 2, Sigma 3. What are the answer? three values you are getting after substitution of this ABC? Okay, so let us assume that you are getting this answer. Sigma 1 is supposed to be 134.9 MPa. Yes. Anybody has got this answer? And the minimum value you might have got a minus 9.6. So uh, one value one thirty four point nine. That is what the maximum value. That is what is sigma one, and the minimum value is the minus nine point six. So once you know maximum and minimum, you can subtract from A to get the second value sigma two. That is twenty four point seven. So you obtained the value of sigma one, sigma two, sigma three. So the three value that is 134.9 minus 9.6 and another one is 24.7. So the sigma one is a maximum, sigma three is minimum here, minus 9.6. And 24.7 is a sigma two value. I suppose everybody is getting this answer. Yes, sir. Okay. So you can take a screenshot if it is good. Okay. The same way, you can find the maximum CSS also. In case if you have a tau max 1, then you don't have to take sigma 2, sigma 3. Average of that, that is a sigma 2 minus sigma 3 by 2 will be the tau max 1. So we know the value of sigma 2 value, sigma 3 value, so you can get the value of tau max 1. Same way to calculate the tau max 2, so you can get the, we can use the sigma 1 and the sigma 3. For the tau max 2, you can get the value of sigma 1 and the sigma 3. Difference of this principle is divided by 2 will give the tau max 2. I say uh, tau max 3. So we will have to get the difference of uh, to sigma 1 and sigma 2. Little bit 2. Will be the tau max 3. So here 55.1. Okay. So tau max 1 also you can get tau max 2, tau max 3. So this is what the answer we will be getting. You can take a note of it. After that, you can check for the calculation. So we got a sigma 1. That is principle one. That is 134 per 9. That is what we say maximum principle says. So minimum principle says is 9.6 minus 9.6. Uh, and the second principle says is 24.7. So tau max 1, tau max 2, tau max 3 also we calculated. Okay, so this is what regarding the uh, 3D cases. So we uh, just arrived. So this is what the formula we use actually for calculation of A. Calculation of the B, calculation of the C. And the sigma 1 is a maximum of this all this value. Sigma 2, A minus sigma 1 does minus sigma 2 does. 
and the sigma 3 minimum of this value and the tau max 1 formula, tau max 2 formula, tau max 3 formula. Okay, you can take screenshot that of this expression. Uh, so so far we arrived a uh, principal stresses sigma one, sigma two, sigma three. We know that the principal stresses are the maximum stresses and the minimum stresses. Shall we move again? Yes, so this is what we, so far we saw about the state of stress in three dimension. Okay, so next we will move on to stresses on inclined plane. Okay, can anyone guess why we calculate the maximum stresses, my principal stresses? Oh, you told it's still okay, actually. Any structure. Okay, so a particular structure, let us take any structure. Okay, let us take any structure of this kind. 3D structure. Oh, you told the principles is calculations are okay, okay. Suppose if you know, uh, the principal plane in this body, when this body is subjected to any kind of forces, uh, let us assume that uh, there is a plane called a principal plane, so that will be the in this direction, okay, with respect to x axis, with respect to horizontal. Now, what I can uh, do is during its uh, functional use, so I can make use of the stronger material that means say uh, the material which is having a, a higher x modulus that can be used in this plane so rest of the plane rest of this portion we can agree uh, we can go for a minimum x modulus that is lowest of the material to prevent the failure so wherever we find the direction of the principal stress so in this direction only we go for highest of the material so rest of the uh, portion we may go, go for lowest of the material so, so that we can achieve the economy also Okay, so instead of going for a same kind of material everywhere, you so say we can go for composite. So wherever the direction of a principal stress are there, there you go, go for stronger material. Whose x model is higher. Is it okay? So that is why that is why we are interested in finding the principal stress direction. So because the crack is expected to initiate in case of brittle material in the direction of the principal stresses. So failure is expected to start in the direction of the principal stresses. But in case of ductile material, the failure will be in the direction of the maximum shear stresses. So it all depends upon the material, type of material. So you should be able to calculate the orientation of the principal plane, orientation of the shear plane. So that is why we calculate theta, theta p and theta s. Principal plane theta p1 and theta p2 okay so once you know the direction so concentrate on that particular portion replace the material with the ice and the material so failure can be avoided is it okay so when you switch out to stresses on intent plane so far we talked about only 3d so 3d is converted to 2d because the sigma z component is all zero. Sigma z, okay, tau a y z, tau x z are zero. So, so if the uh, a point becomes a 2D. So in this case, we have only sigma x and sigma y and tau x y. That's only three component. Here it was a six component of independent stresses. Now that is three components required to define a state of stress at a given point.
So now instead of 3D element, we can go for plane element. So sigma x, sigma y, tau x y. So three common of stresses available only as this particular point. So that is what 2D case. If sigma is y, sigma x, and the tau x y are known, then we can calculate the principal stresses. I will suppose uh, any other plane other than the principal stress, suppose I at any given plane. We want to find the in this plane, what is the state of stress? What is the normal stress value? Sigma, what is the CSS values? How to find now? So that is why we use the terms of theta rotation. So we know this is the axis of the principal stress. Okay, that will be at least are known to me because sigma x, sigma y, and tau x, y are known to me now. So, what about the other planes? Other planes. So, what is the normal stress? What is the CSS? So, that you, you need to find. That is what the, we are calling about is this transformation. Okay, so any other given angle, angular plane, I want to know what is the normal stress. What is it? CSS. So that is what we call the stress transformation. If we uh, theta, if we being given, angle theta is given, then it is possible to tell what is the normal stress acting on this plane. What is the CSS acting on this plane? So now 3D is connected to 2D now. Because we are talking about only this particular plane. Look at this plane, this will be sigma x for you. So this is here sigma y. Is that sigma x here again? So upper it is sigma y here. So we are looking at only x y plane now. So the 3D element of a state of a stress at a given point is connected to 2D element now. Is it okay? So we require at least three component of this. Okay, define a stress at a given point. That is sigma x, sigma y, tau x y. Okay, let us assume that the angle of rotation. At a 30 degree angle of rotation, you are asked to find the, what is the normal stress, uh, what is the CS stress okay, in this plane. How to go for it? So determine the stresses on this AA plane, which is at a 30 degree to the vertical. Just to note on this sketch. Okay, am I audible? Sir, I am audible or not? I am audible. Kick the audible, sir. Yes, audible, sir. So now we are interested in finding the what type of stresses will be acting on this plane, a plane. So you can take out this triangle here outside. So this is what the uh, stresses we are interested in. Normal stress and CS stresses acting on this plane. So you've been given uh, 40 MPA. Okay, sigma x is uh, 30 MPA, sigma O is 40 MPA, and you've been given the CS is 35 MPA. So we are going to analyze only this triangular element. This triangular element will have an area. Okay, this area we call it as A, suppose. If it is A, so the original portion, this area is going to be A sin 30 because the angle is 30 degree. So this area.
will be a cost certainty. Do you agree or not? The area is the area of the intended brain. A is the area of the intended brain. A cost certainty will be the vertical component of uh, area of the triangle element. And the A sign that will be the original area component of this triangle element. So we've been given stresses. Suppose if I want to find the, the forces, you have to multiply by area. Okay. So sigma x dash only we want to find actually. So multiply by area will give the force. How much force are expected to act in this plane? And the same way, shear stresses multiply by area of this plane will have the shear force. Okay, shear force, this we call as a shear force. Shear stress multiplied by area. Okay, same way, you have been given 30 MPA here, stress multiplied by area. 30 A cos 30 will be the force. 35 MPA is a force, a stress acting here. So 35 into A cos 30 will be the force acting downward. So here again, 35 A sin 30 will be the force acting horizontally here. So CSS multiple by area will be shear force. Okay. Actually, uh, uh, can anyone uh, explain what is actually shear force? Shear force is the end of the number. How to, uh, suppose if you want to explain to your student, uh, how can you go for it? Shear force, what do you mean by shear force? If you ask, how can we explain? Okay, because we are dealing with always the shear force, uh, shear stress multiplied area will give the shear force. How come the shear force comes here? Uh, what what is actually shear force? Yes, sir. Okay, suppose if I am considering a, a it's broomstick or a okay wooden stick, I am giving you a, a wooden stick and a scissor also. I am asking you to cut the wooden stick by using this scissor. Okay. So I will be applying forces upward, downward. Okay. In order to cut this stick, so I will not apply the forces. These forces are applied by the scissor. If the forces are equal, suppose let us take a 10, here again 10 Newton, will the broomstick will get cut or not? At the same point. Cut out. Yes. So, the scissor which is used to use a broomstick. So, when I am cutting this wooden stick by using scissor, let us assume that I am applying equal and opposite forces. So, will the stick will get cut or not? Yes, anybody? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Uh, actually, equal and opposite. I am giving equal and opposite forces. No, sir. Uh, why it is, uh, do, do not be cut in case if I am giving equal and opposite forces? It will get cut. Sigma V is equal to 0 get balanced. Yeah. 
sigma v is equal to 0. Vertical forces, assume sigma vertical forces are equal to 0. So it won't be cut actually. But suppose if you are giving a force at, uh, at the top of 16 Newton, 16 kilonewton, Newton, here I wouldn't need a 10 kilonewton. Newton. So in such cases, it will be cut or not? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Uh, so that 16 minus 10, 6 unit of force is what? Shear force. All right. So the unbalanced force at the section, unbalanced vertical force at the section, unbalanced original force, unbalanced intended force would go. The shear forces may not be only vertical. Okay. So the 6 uh, unit of force is what we call it as a shear force. Okay. So your shearing takes place. So the failure takes place because of the shearing. So and the force is shear force. Okay. Now x does so it as into A. Is it nothing but a shear force? Okay. Now we want to get this all this stresses vary. Sigma x does, now x does so it as. Once if we know that very because that is what our topic. What is the what type of stressor acting in the trend of pain? Sigma x does, tau x does what it does. Okay. Now to get this value of sigma x does what it does, sigma x does and the tau x does what it does. So what we are going to do is we are going to analyze. The forces along the left to right and right to left. Sigma fx. So what are the forces that goes towards left now? Number one, 30 A cos 30. Okay. Yes or no? So next force will be 35 A sin 30. So here the original component of this force, sigma x dash into A is a force, original component of this force. That will be cos 30, cos component. Sigma x dash A into cos 30 will be original component. So right side, that is why it is positive. Here. here again, the original component of the shear force. This is a tau x weight. Tau x way and E. Do you agree or not? Is it correct? When I analyze the original component of the process only, moving towards left to moving towards right. So moving uh, towards right is positive, moving towards left is negative. So I can get this expression, okay? Shall I go ahead? Participants, you are requested to please respond. Okay, next the same way, when we go for the forces acting vertically upward, vertically downward. Okay, so in this element. So what are the forces are acting downward? So what are the elements of forces are acting upward? 
सो माइनस थर्टी पे ये कास्ट थर्टी सो एक्टिंग डाउनवर्ड के माइनस फोर्टी ये साइन थर्टी एक्टिंग डाउनवर्ड सो दिस कंपोनेंट वर्टिकल कंपोनेंट सो अपन दिस इज एम कैंड फोर्स This force will be positive, okay? Upward compound will be positive. That is why sigma x dash into y sine thirty will be upward force, positive force. And the tau also. So this compound. So we analyzed it. this element, triangle element, for horizontal as well as vertical components. We use the expression sigma f x is equal to zero, sigma f y is equal to zero. We can go for solution now. We have the equation, two equation. Now the unknown quantities are only sigma x dash and the tau x dash v dash. So since A is common, it can be neglected. Okay. So A, if you okay, you can cancel the all the A because it is common to both sides. So you can calculate the sigma x dash, tau x dash, y dash from these two equations. Okay. Is it okay? Actually, teaching Shraddha material online is very difficult. <laughs> is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Now, from this two equation, can we get the sigma x dash and the tau x dash y dash? So, if you are able to get, you can get these values. This will be answer. So, sigma x dash will be sixty-two point eight MPa. Tau x dash y dash will be twenty-one point eight MPa. Suppose uh, um, in case if you have time, just to go for it, try to solve this uh, two equation. So we will get the sigma x dash will be. That means this forces, or the sigma x dash means stresses perpendicular to the plane. I calculated. Same parallel to plane. We calculated. So the, that is what unknown. Unknown stresses. Okay, you, you can take a screenshot of the expression. After that, you can calculate these values. Same thing, the same element can be analyzed by taking the reference axis x dash y dash in this way. This is of f x, say f x dash, f y dash. So that means all along the uh, x dash direction, all along the y dash direction. Same same element. So here again we can you can get the expression this way. So for all the forces are inlined uh, along with the x dash direction or sigma epsilon f x dash. So equal to zero. Same way, f y direction equal to zero. So when you put the unknown value, it will be sigma x dash and tau x dash y dash.
So in case if you are able to calculate the for unknown value, use this two equation. Again, we will get the same answer. Instead of taking fx as epsilon fx, epsilon x as fx dash we are taking. Okay, here, epsilon y, epsilon y dash. Here again, the same uh, answer we are getting. Is it okay? So at any given plane, it is possible to find one normal stress and two CSS, two CSS stresses. Tau xy dash, tau xs y dash, and tau y dash x dash. And one normal stress. So only thing we should know the theta. Angle bit the job. We can analyze. Angle of rotation but the unit. Is it okay? Shall we go ahead? Oh yes, a few participants are giving their responses in the chat box. Oh, chat box, okay. okay. Yes, sir. I am not able to see. Oh, this is what uh, the method, how to proceed. To calculate the unknown forces in the nickel element. So already we know that a element, a 2D element. Okay. So if you rotate the 2D element for any given plane, if you want to find the stresses on the particular plane, uh, if it is anti-clockwise, uh, generally it is designated as a positive. The rotation of the element, if it is anti-clockwise, it is positive. Okay. So in such cases, so we can get the same expression. So you have the equation now. Uh, use this equation to get the, the very sigma x dash and the sigma y and tau x dash y dash. Now this is a derivation. Now so far we solve this problem. How much is the quantity sigma x dash? How much is the quantity tau x dash y dash? Now same thing can be arrived, formula can be arrived uh, by having the same type of uh, discussion. So we just analyze the component of the forces along x direction, x dash direction, along the y dash direction. Okay. So when we solve this two equation, so we can get this expression now. So A will be eliminated actually. So sigma x dash will be equal to sigma x cos square theta plus sigma y sin square theta plus 2 tau x y sin theta cos theta. Uh, sigma tau x dash y dash will be equal to minus sigma x sin theta cos theta plus sigma y sin theta cos theta plus tau x y cos square theta minus tau x y sin square theta. So we can uh, substitute this value instead of cos square theta. Go for 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2. And same way for sin square theta, we can go for 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2. So the sign theta cos theta, 2 sin theta cos theta will be sin 2 theta. So if we can expand uh, after substitution of this to express a trigonometric expression, just expand it. So ultimately we can get this uh, sigma x dash. This is sin, theta, sin 2 theta, 2 sin theta cos theta and uh, cos 2 theta, that is cos square theta minus sin square theta. We can get this expression, sigma x dash is how much? 
Chibba, uh, tau x dash y dash is how much? So I'm going a little fast actually. So try to do it in case if you are able to do it, it will be better. So in, uh, just as replace the cos square theta with the one plus cos two theta by two, replace sin square theta with the one minus cos two theta by two, replace two sin theta uh, two sin theta cos theta with the sin two theta. And expand it. So we can get this expression now. So instead of cos square theta, substitute the value of 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2. Instead of sin square theta, substitute the value of 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2. Uh, instead of 2 sin theta cos theta, substitute sin 2 theta. So and expand it, you will get this expression. Same way, you can make use of this cos to theta formula also here. So, you can get this expression tau x dash y dash. So, I given just a method actually. So, in case if you are able to do it, it will be better. So, you can get this expression. So, this expression gives the, the stresses acting on the inclined element at any given inclined element. When we solve the problem, we will understand better. Actually, this is a derivation part of it. So, so what is the what type of stress are available on an inclined plane in a 2D element? One normal stress and two shear stresses. One normal stress is uh, if it is given, the theta is given, angle of rotation is given, then it is possible to calculate the normal stresses. And if uh, sigma x sigma o is given also, this is also given. So you can calculate these sigma x dash and also you can calculate tau x dash y dash. The angle of rotation of the element is given. Okay. So this is how we want to go for a derivation of this uh, expression. And in case if we replace theta with the theta plus 90 degree. The normal stress on OE phase can be obtained. Sigma OE dash we can obtain. Instead of theta, we can go for theta plus 90. So this is the main condition actually. So sigma X dash plus sigma OE dash is equal to sigma X plus sigma OE. We can check it up. After finding this value, sigma X dash and sigma OE dash, we can very well check up with this relationship. Whether it is correct or not. Okay. So this is what the uh, regarding stresses on an inclined brain. So we just looked at the stresses on inclined plane. At any given plane, what is the unknown value of stresses? Sigma x dash how much? Tau x dash tau x dash y dash how much? Okay. So for that we derive the expression. Uh, we use a this epsilon fx is equal to zero, epsilon f is equal to zero. Uh, by using these two equations, we can get the value of sigma x and tau x dash. Sigma x dash and tau x dash y dash. Okay. And uh, one more method we talked about uh, on any given plane, uh, the x dash y dash plane. So in case if we are able to analyze, there also you can get the very same answer. So we can go for derivation of this all this formula by using this method. Okay, so that is what uh, regarding the inclined plane. Next, uh, when we go for principal stresses, already I told what is the principal stresses. The maximum stress is developed in the body, actually for a given loading. So this is a body which is subjected to some kind of loading. Okay, some plane will have the maximum stresses. So that plane we call it as a principal plane. The stresses of the principal plane is called as a principal stresses. Okay. 
So where is that plane? With respect to horizontal, just we require to calculate. So if it is why we require to calculate this plane because we can replace this plane with the isotherm material. The plane number two, the manna one law, we can go for replacing with the isotherm material, isotherm material, because the cracks are in, expected to initiate only in the principal plane. So to avoid the failure, we can replace the ice, that particular plane with the ice of the material. Uh, so uh, by, by the rest of the area, we can go for the rest of the material. That is the idea. So how to derive this principal stress formula from the uh, this inclined stress, okay, stress on inclined plane. So we know the element, 2 d element, we have a sigma x, sigma y, and a tau xy. So when it is rotated at an angle theta, an anti-clockwise direction. So already I told you, it should be always positive for anti-clockwise direction. So the equation we got is sigma x does, sigma y does, tau x does, y does. So this is what the, regarding the transformation of stresses. So only if you just if you need to substitute only the theta and a sigma x sigma y value, so you can find the normal stress and the stresses on the particular plane. Okay. Shall I go ahead? Suppose if you, from this expression, we want to find what is the maximum value of stresses. Sigma 1. That is what we say it is principal stresses. Okay. So to get the maximum value of stresses, so what we need to give, we need to do is, uh, from the mathematics, we can take a derivative. So we have been given a f y is equal to f of x. So the dy by dx is a slope. The slope wherever it is zero, that will be the maximum and minimum value. So I suppose if you want to find the a slope on this given point, draw a tangent with respect to original, what is the angle? dv by that is what the slope is all about. dv by dx. Okay. dv by dx. So in case if we calculate the slope at these two points, maximum and minimum, again the dv by dx will be zero. So for a given mathematics equation, we want to find the maximum and minimum value, we need to only derive the derivative of this value and equal to zero. So you can get the maximum and minimum value. Same thing we are going to do here. So we are going to take a differentiation of this value, this expression. Differentiate this is sigma x dash with respect to d theta. So we can get the value of maximum and minimum equal to zero. If we substitute, we can get the maximum and minimum value. So this is what the expression already we got. Sigma x dash is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos 2 theta plus tau x y sin 2 theta. Now differentiate this expression with respect to theta and equal to 0. So we can find out which angle of plane the maximum and the minimum value of stress is there. So differentiate this is a constant. It becomes a zero after differentiation. So when we differentiate cos 2 theta, it will be minus sin 2 theta into 2, uh, divided by into 2. Okay. So that is a 2 to cancel. Sigma x minus sigma y by minus. Same way, sin 2 theta will be differentiation after differentiation and becomes 2 cos 2 theta. So tau x y is equal to zero. Is it okay? So 
But from this, you can calculate the, what is the angular plane under which the maximum and minimum stresses will be available. That is what tan uh, 2 theta p. So if you, you take this expression right side, it will become minus 2 tau, tau x cos 2 theta. So tan 2 theta will be sin 2, sin 2 theta will be cos 2 theta. We can get this expression tan 2 theta p. Okay. Ponindra uh, said there's a question in the chat box. I hope you have noticed that. I just, uh, I could not make it. I will see. That box, huh? Yes, so, from which axis the theta needs to be considered? So, when they are deriving, Already we have followed this. Theta is from with respect to x-axis. So the angle of rotation will be with respect to always x-axis. Okay. If it is the rotation, if it is anti-clockwise, it is positive. If it is clockwise, it is negative. If it is clockwise, it is negative. Positive, always with respect to x-axis in the element. Stress element, you need to take consider from the x-axis. Okay. So from this, we will make out the, the plane at which the maximum stress are expected to develop. You, you need to find only theta p. So what is the theta p plane at which the maximum principal stress are available? Sigma only is expected to act only this plane. So that means we need to replace this plane with the high strength material. So wherever the maximum principle stress are developed, we will have to go for high strength material. So for that purpose, we just calculate, calculate the sigma one then. To identify the position of the plane, we need to take this formula. Where the plane is expected to have. So if we know the theta p value, then with respect to horizontal, okay, so it is possible to identify the plane. That plane will get the maximum stresses. Okay, suppose uh, tan to theta p. So the tan uh, theta will be always positive in the first quadrant and as well as the third quadrant. Okay. So in case if we take a first quadrant, then the two theta p will be. Uh, so we can get the expression like this. So opposite side uh, tau x y, the adjacent side will be sigma x minus sigma y by two. So from this you can get the value of hypotenuse. So you can calculate the sine two theta cos two theta from this triangle again. Substitute these two values. Sign to theta and cast to theta values. So we can get the sigma one. So already we know stress transformation in general equation. The general equation is sigma x dash. So you go to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cast to theta plus tau x y sin theta sin to theta. Okay. So the tan to theta will be positive only in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. So in, in case if we take a first quadrant, okay, uh, tan formula is tau x y divided by sigma x minus sigma y by 2. So here it will be tau x y opposite side. Adjacent side will be sigma x minus sigma y by 2. So once if you know opposite side or adjacent side, you can calculate what is the hypotenuse. So from this, you can get the value of sine 2 theta cos 2 theta, which is already available in this equation. Now substitute these values here. We get this 
the maximum value, that is maximum principal is sigma one. Is it okay? So at this idea is you, you should know so that uh, we can um, go for a practice during the lesser time. So we need to just calculate the sine to theta cos to theta substitute these values here. We are not to get the value of the principal sources, sigma one, sigma two. This will this is will really going to lead the sigma one from this expression. Shall I go ahead? Same way, uh, third quadrant also, we may have two theta. So the triangle becomes this way. So here do we have the tau xy. The adjacent side becomes a negative side. Negative sigma x minus sigma y by 2. So the hypotenuse becomes this is one. So from this angle, you can calculate again sine to theta. Cos to theta. Substitute these values in this equation. You get the minimum principal stresses. Sigma p2. So from the first quadrant, we get uh, the maximum value. From the third quadrant, we can get the... Uh, uh, sir, excuse me, sir. Shall we yes. have a break, sir? Yes, yes, yes. You can have the break. Yes, okay. sir. Thank you, ma'am. So we'll, you we'll have, uh, like, uh, we'll ask them to assemble at 10.55, uh, uh, sir. Yes, 10, 10 minutes is more than sufficient. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. So I request the participants to have some break and... Uh, Please be back uh, for the session at 10.55 a.m.